we all know that the further we get away from a light source, the dimmer it, its effects are. Uh, and the inverse square law helps us to calculate the amount of light that is falling on a surface the further we get away from the light source. So if we have a, a very quick look at this, so imagine here is our light source and this is a surface one meter away. So that's one meter. Then a certain amount of illumination will occur on this surface. So let's suppose for the sake of arguments we get 200 lumens per square meter. To you and me that's 200 lux. So if we took the same lamp and we made it travel two meters, so that's two meters, then the amount of illuminance on the surface will reduce by a quarter. It's going to be only 50 lumens per square meter. So the distance we travel is critical and the amount of light falling on the surface is proportional to the inverse of the square of the distance. So let's have a look at that from another perspective at the bottom here. This is all explained in more detail and in probably better language on your handout. So here I have a light source. How much is it going to illuminate this surface at a distance of one meters, this surface at a distance of two meters, or this surface at a distance of three meters? Well, at one meter, it's one over the distance squared, and the distance is one squared, that equals one. If we move on to this one, the distance is two meters, it's one over two squared. One over two squared is a quarter. Oops. So if we now look at three meters, one over 3 squared is 1 over 9. So in simple terms, if we have full illumination on this surface at 1 meter, then at 2 meters the amount of illumination on the surface has fallen to a quarter. At 3 meters the illumination on this surface has fallen to a ninth and the next one would be a sixteenth and so it goes on. So the reduction in the illuminance on the surface is quite rapid. So let's look at that a little bit further. We can use a very simple formula. The illumination on the surface is the intensity of the lamp divided by the distance squared. That's the formula we need for the inverse square law. And this is measured in lux. Lux is shortened to Lx. And on the previous page, I did call it lumens per meter squared, which is what it is. So, so this is in lux. On your handout, I've written in a row three calculations which all pertain to the same lamp. So we have a lamp with an intensity of 500 candelas and the idea is to figure out how much it illuminates a surface at 1 meter, 2 meter and 3 meters. So let's do that right now. So we're going to use this formula in example 1. E equals I over D squared. The brightness of the lamp is 500 candela. The distance is 1, don't forget to square it. And that's going to give you 500 lux. I'm just going to change pen. That one's not very good. So example 2, we take exactly the same light, but we change the distance to 2 meters. So 500 was the intensity of the lamp and it's 2 squared. That is now 125 lux 
is the illumination of the surface. And if we do the third of the three examples, take the same formula, E equals I over D squared, put the numbers in, 500, it's at 3 meters, and if you work that out, that's going to come to 55.6 lux. Okay, so what this shows is that the further we get away from the point of the, the light source, then the less the illuminance on the surface is going to be. Okay, so that was a high-speed look at the inverse square law. Let's move on to the cosine law. The cosine law is just a variation of the inverse square law. So if we look at the distance perpendicularly, so straight underneath, we want to find out how much the working plane is illuminated by this point light source. We're going to use the inverse square law. If I said there's a point somewhere over here that I want us to determine how much illuminance there is, then we need to use the cosine law. So the greater this angle, the greater that angle there is, the lower the amount of light there will be falling on the work plane. So if you just look carefully at this for a moment, we've created a triangle. And that triangle is crucial. We'll do the calculations on it in a moment. But this angle here is called phi. And we're going to need to work that out. That's why we did work on Pythagoras previously. So the cosine of this angle now comes into the play. And we can determine the illumination here. I'm going to call it point P, just there. We can determine a, the illumination at that point by taking a variation of the first um, formula that we saw. So E equals I cos phi over d squared. And again, that's going to be in lux. So the only addition now from the previous formula is we're multiplying by the cosine of phi. Right, let's have a look at the example that is on your sheet. So on your sheet, I've said we have a lamp which is 4,000 candela intensity. We then have three meters down to the working plane. This is the perpendicular height. And it's four meters further along the work plane. This is the point P where we want to determine what the illumination is. So this is the distance that we need to know. Okay, so I'm hoping that if your brains are working on this, then you can see that we need Pythagoras. On the next page of your handout, I've tried to take you through three simple clear steps. So I'll see if I squeeze it all on this remaining sheet. If not, I'll start a fresh one. So the first thing is to find this distance, the distance the light travels. In short, you've got a triangle that is three, four, and we know it's three, four, five. The numbers won't always work out that nicely, so I'm going to work it out for you. Distance, D, is the square root of three squared plus four squared. If you put the numbers in your calculator, you'll come up with five. So that distance is five. Part two. I'm doing it in, in three clear steps for you. Part two, take that same triangle. If we just label it, three, four, five, and this bit is phi, we need the cosine of this angle. Oops, cos phi is adjacent over hypotenuse. I'll work across because I'm running out of page. And the adjacent is this one, and the hypotenuse is that one. So it's 3 over 5, which is 0 0.6. So this number is going to come into our final formula. 
do need another sheet. So step three. Step three. The final bit is to use the formula. Find the illuminance E equals I cos phi over D squared. Put the numbers in that we've just been using. The brightness of the light, which isn't the correct term, but it's a good way of remembering it. So the brightness of the light is 4000. Cos phi, the number we just calculated, was 0 0.6. Divided by the distance the light travels, and that's 5 squared. If you put that into your calculator, you should come up with 96 lux. Okay. So at this point, you need to get on and do some of the questions yourselves. You need to be getting up to at least around question five. Both of these formulae are extremely popular in exam questions. Good luck with that.